Hello everyone and welcome back to another Backlot Banter Movie Review. My name is Tucker Hazel. Today, I would rather be joined by anyone but my co-host Timo Nelson. Come on. And today we're here to talk about anyone but you. This is a theatrically released romance movie. Timo, these do not happen very no. much anymore. And we will be talking about that. And of course, we'll be talking about our thoughts on this movie. But we want to hear your thoughts on this movie in the comment section in our Discord. And you can also indicate how you feel about this movie, whether it's positive or negative, by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It just, it, trust me, it just works that way. Timo, you are abroad. Mm -hmm. You were able to find anyone but you on the big screen, though. And we have both seen it. And I'm excited to hear your thoughts. How do you yes. feel? I'm still in Portugal. I got to see it on the big screen at the Portuguese Megaplex here near me. And, uh, you know, had the, had the little funny words down at the bottom. But this movie's 99.5% um, in English. There's like two lines sure. that are said in another language that I just missed that part. But it, it was, had zero relevance, so it was all right. Um, you know what? I had a good time watching this movie. I don't think there was too much special about this film. But like you said yeah. at the beginning, it is a theatrically released rom-com that... Yeah played pretty well it was funny yeah. people were laughing along in my theater it wasn't like super full or anything but there was some <laughs> you know someone clapped one large clap when the uh, eventual <laughs> kiss happens when the two main characters get together a single clap first. yeah there was like one they like <laughs> slapped their hands and then the whole okay. theater was like bust out laughing because it was just really funny <laughs> but yeah by I... and large i thought it was pretty all right it's kind of paint by numbers but that's sure. okay i think yeah no i i think i feel the exact same way i think it strikes an interesting balance in that you feel like you've seen this movie before, and you can predict all the beats, and you can predict all I the lines and stuff. why you feel like you've seen this movie before. Sure. It's a Shakespeare adaptation, very simple plot co uh, you know, concept. But I think this movie works in ways that I wasn't expecting it to. I think actually the like comedic scenarios that they write are are pretty clever. I especially love when when they're on the plane, Beatrice wants to get the fucking cookie and she climbs over, she gets her shirt stuck and she's her like butts in his face and he's asleep and she listens into the music. I'm like, that is a genuinely clever and unique scenario that I was having a lot a lot of fun with. And I, I think that the some of the line deliveries are very good, and some of the stories that they tell are very funny. So I think comedically, this movie definitely shines. I think it also shines a little bit less, but still pretty solidly into performances. I think Glenn Powell is phenomenal. I think he's fantastic mm -hmm. in this film. Yeah. I think Sydney Sweeney is a lot better than I expected her to be. I don't think she's amazing, but she I think she did a very good job. She shows some comedic chops. There's a couple of supporting characters that I like. I think the, the performances of the supporting cast are relatively hit or miss. Mm -hmm. um, but then when it comes to, like, this film as something that is adding to the cinematic canon, doing something unique filmically. No, not really. I mean, it kind of looks like a TV commercial. Like it's yeah. kind of shot very simply. Uh, there's nothing really interesting going not on like in terms of the editing or sound design. Directorial flair. No, but you know what? That's not why you're going to see this movie. Yeah, and, and so, why are you, Timo? Well, I was going to see the movie because I think Sydney Sweeney is uh, unbelievably attractive. Yeah. And that she is in this film. This film is full of beautiful people, beautiful locations, mm -hmm. um, and some nice heartfelt moments that you know yeah. it it rang it rang pretty true to me. I mean the 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 romance was this nice kind of will they won't they do they hate each other do they not hate each other mm -hmm. and that kind of like. I guess role play in which, which is what we're following the film in which they decide at one, you know, they're like, we hate each other. You know, we had this bad experience mm -hmm. together and now we're stuck on this um, wedding trip. We've got to figure out how to not ruin our mutual friends wedding, yeah. which they seem to be, they seem, that seems like it's going to happen. It's certainly mm -hmm. going to be ruined by these two. Um, yeah. Lots of B names, Ben and B, but then there's mm -hmm. also Bo and yes, sure. there's a couple He's other, <laughs> Um, the supporting cast kind of plays along with it. And so, yeah, I found myself just like following along, like in on the comedy. Mm -hmm. I think that my favorite little comedic moment was when they go on the hike. And this is like right after Sweeney and Powell have kind of decided that, okay, we're going to fake this. We're going to fake yeah. our love for each other. And, and then 
Now we need, we need to, prove to do it. something we need to, to prove it. Exactly. We need to yeah. act. And I liked the like acting within the act. The actors acting like they're acting. Mm -hmm. um, that sold pretty well. And that moment in which they're like grabbing all over each other, grabbing each other's butts, and like yeah. it's kind of crude humor. But I mean, the film yeah, straddles yeah. a line between just a straight up rom com, but then also a sex comedy, which yeah. it was pushing a bit farther than I thought it would. Honestly, in like. Mm being sexy being like yeah. you know not as tame as i kind of believed it would be and it it benefited from that yeah i i think that the fact that glenn powell and sydney sweeney are the new up-and-coming incredibly traditionally attractive actors i mean you could have they seen are just these Hollywood kind of people 100 <laughs> percent. yeah and they're like they, they fit into that stereotype in a way that Frankly, most of the actors that we see today don't fit into like traditional stereotypes in terms of how attractive they are or like uh, the ones that really do came from like the 90s era when that was more common. But they really are just like, frankly, the default attractive white couple. But they yeah. both, they fit those roles very well and allows the film to sort of play with those stereotypes in fun ways and then crank it up with a little bit of raunchiness. I think that, I think I maybe expected it to go a little bit farther because it is... I mean, usually comedies in this era have to do something a little bit farther mm -hmm. in order to, like, play to an audience and be like, this is why you're coming out to this, as opposed to watching one of the four billion rom-coms that are dumped straight on fucking have, streaming yeah, services Or recently. that have already been made. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I, I was expecting to be a little bit raunchier, but I, I did like that it was like, a will they, won't they, uh, pretty explicit about the fact that they are interested in each other's bodies and and then all the supporting cast like plays into that in funny ways i i, I thought that the the sex humor part of it was a little bit underplayed um but i think it was a, a solid balance sure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean well just thinking about some of the supporting cast in which they're trying to get these two together i yeah. was pretty sold on how much they really hated each other i think sure. that the yeah, yeah. the progression that the two lovers go to from they go through is mm -hmm pretty at least i felt it um through the performances they sold sure. me on that they were really there are some looks towards the beginning of the film where they're just like locking eyes and in a like a i hate you mm -hmm. kind of way um but as the film progresses and as we get to the scene on the boat which this film yeah, is yeah, full of thing of, of just unspoken wealth which is kind of fun to watch like if you just yeah, kind of yeah. like don't don't really think about it and you're like okay these people are just obscenely wealthy and they ha they can just mm -hmm. go on a yacht for their wedding rehearsal dinner yeah okay fine by me i mean yeah great uh, but only like scene. nine people there <laughs> yeah so and and that's the scene where i kind of felt that i, I felt a change in their in their performances and mm -hmm. in the chemistry between powell and sweeney which i thought mm -hmm. worked pretty well i yeah. felt the connection between the two of them whether it was positive or negative throughout the whole film it was like there was the spark that was it was either like bzz, 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 like butting heads or like mm -hmm. connecting yeah sure depending on which side of the magnet is pointing at it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that their, their chemistry is is why you're seeing this movie. It's why it was made in the first place. It was like, hey, we can put out a rom-com in theaters, and if we get two of the most attractive and up-and-coming popular actors to play these roles, people our age who are familiar with them are going to want to go see the hot people fight and kiss. Yeah. Uh, and, and that absolutely worked in this film. I think that the mo – you're right. The moment – uh, for me, isn't necessarily the boat scene, but is when they jump off the boat and they're yes, on the buoy I think together. that's what I was talking that about. That is – that is really, I think that might be the best scene in the film. Not mm -hmm. only is it unique, <laughs> I've never seen two characters have like a heart to heart conversation while sitting in a fucking, on a buoy in a bay. Like, what, yeah. what is and, that? And, and it's then not they just get picked up bay. by the helicopter. It's not just any bay. It's like oh, in front clearly of the Opera House. It's, yeah, and it's on location. Like, I can, they're yeah. not no, shooting yeah. this on the volume. They're shooting this in mm -hmm. the real life. They really shot on location. I appreciate Really selling yeah. me on Australia, actually. I want to go there now. <laughs> no, definitely. I think that the Australian backdrop uh, was something I was. A little bit confused by it initially. I think it, it more is just to like put our characters in a in a situation that aren't they aren't imminently comfortable with. Like they have to share, they have to be in a house sort of together, and they have to be around people that they all don't know incredibly well. Um, but I think by the end of the film, when the multiple culminating scenes feature the Sydney Opera House prominently in the background, I'm like, this is like iconography that we don't mm -hmm. usually get too much in movies nowadays especially because shooting on location is so much rarer but you think about the scene like sleepless in seattle when they meet on the top of the empire state building it's like, that is a fucking movie scene that has yeah that is iconography and there's a building Shoot and it's memorable because the it's money. there yes 
and they, and they the did money. that here with with the nighttime sequence of them on the buoy in the Sydney Opera House in the background, or the you know, par- uh, camera going around three sixty shot of them kissing in front of the the Sydney uh, Opera House. It's like or, that is or them being that's a money like shot. lifted into the air by the helicopter, yeah, yeah. and and I don't think they faked that at all. I think that they just Maybe. did that, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what about? Do you have any f- favorite moments of comedy from this movie? Well, first, first, I, I have a little tidbit, and I think that okay. you were talking about why people would go see this, and you'd go see this sure. because it's Glenn Powell and Sidney Sweeney. And for me, yeah. I actually got to meet Glenn Powell because he was the speaker really? at my university graduation. Oh, cool. um, and so I have a funny little Did he story. Go to uh, for a little right. bit, he's one of those. Oh, okay. He's one of those funny UT characters that didn't graduate, but the school really likes to uh, pump sure. up and claim as their own, even though he didn't <laughs> finish. Um, but he was there talking. He gave, he gave a nice speech. I remember some of it. And uh, as I was shaking his hand after I like, you know, got my diploma after mm-hmm. I graduated, I said, "I'm going to put a wire on you someday. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to put a wireless microphone on you someday." Oh, and, and he sure. just kind of laughed. He laughed, and I laughed. It was kind of a joke, but it was also I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I meant it. I meant it. Yeah. So glad um, you're watching. <laughs> yeah, but Keep this man like, in mind. <laughs> uh, another reason why I would just go see the film because I was like, well, this guy, I actually want him to do well in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. So that when I've done well in the industry, I could put a mic on him. <laughs> no, well, definitely. I think that there is an element to me of seeing this film where. I wasn't, like, super sold on the trailers. I thought the trailer was fine, but I thought there were some moments of comedy that were a little overplayed. I thought Sidney Sweeney's line delivery, especially in the uh, takes they chose in the trailer, were not very good. Um, Mm -hmm. But as someone who has a very rich and full cinematic diet, I will watch goddamn anything. The idea of a studio-produced, theatrically-released romance comedy being in theaters is is really really appealing to me so even though even though i don't think this is an amazing movie i don't think it stacks up against some of the best rom-coms that i love uh i am glad i think it's good and i'm glad that i went to see this in theaters because i do believe that this film being as as quality as it is and existing alongside the other family films and superhero films and action films and, and musicals that we're getting right now is very important because studios just do not believe in the theatrically released romance comedy anymore. They simply no. don't. I could no. probably count on one hand the amount of rom-coms I've seen in a theater or that I know have been released in a theater to like at least like a solid amount of acclaim it, since since the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. That, that really killed it. Bros last year, Ticket to Paradise, uh, Marry Me. I think these are all good movies. I, I think Bros is probably my favorite out of all of those. But it's it's such a small number when it used to be just one of the default genres that you like go, a went to of for stars. the, of the yeah. studio's yearly release schedule yeah i mean i don't know it's like the studios don't believe in anything anymore but at yeah, least yeah. that they did put the money forward for this and i mean you said that the the lighting i don't think the lighting was anything special i don't think the cinematography was like terribly special there was a mm-hmm. moment towards the end of the film um when uh, Glenn Powell is kind of going off on the family. He's like, I've been manipulated this whole weekend. You guys suck. I hate you. And instead of just cutting between the shot and reverse shots, they're like whip panning between it. And they're oh, cutting, uh, yeah, in, yeah, the, I remember that. They're cutting yeah. in the pans, but they're still getting that camera to move a bit. And it's a little, at least a little bit more interesting than, yeah. um, you know. That was kind of the only example. I remember like that happening, but like, hey, that's something like in camera work. That, <laughs> I noticed the camera move because otherwise it's kind of just the, you know, lightly floating the camera around these Australian environments as people are walking and talking. And yeah. I think that, that maybe that that's where I'm most disappointed in the film in that because it is theatrically released and it is in a genre that is so small in the modern day, I was hoping for there to be a little bit more cinematically for me to be like go into this and have there be some interesting editing choices and interesting, you know, uh, needle drops and things that mm-hmm. made it feel more distinct. But as it stands, like, it is it is totally serviceably made. There's no like, yeah. oh, the cinematography was bad or the lighting was bad or the costume was bad in these areas. It's just it, no, it, I honestly it, to me wasn't... it felt like a t- like a TV set commercial thing, but on location does help sell the sort of reality and budget of this a little bit more. Mhm. I did like knowing that this is much ado about nothing, that this is mm-hmm. a Shakespeare adaptation and that the film isn't like trying to like throw that in your face all the time but it's also like we are going to keep 
reminding you that that's the case yeah by like putting quotes in the text i yeah. don't know were those it's like diegetic <laughs> diegetic yeah. words environmental words mm -hmm. yeah they're Very just strange. there and you're like oh oh yeah this is based on shakespeare and so yeah i think that that like to me that helps the plot it helps sure. move everything along because all these misunderstandings you know it's a, this is a plot with a classic case of if they would just talk it out in the first mm -hmm. scene if they would just you know say something to each other right off the bat none of the Absolutely. film would have happened yeah, yeah. but the point isn't that that is like conceded or whatever you want there to be drama and have fights and then mm -hmm. you get comedy you get a moment in which the uh the koala winks at old uh pete the roommate yeah, yeah, I think that was maybe my favorite part. That was like hilarious. The part? <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. I mean, because beyond just like the they're they're like in awe of the koala and like the lines that Pete is saying, he's probably my least favorite supporting actor. He was I, not very good. <laughs> I thought that I thought that the character was pretty pretty token esque. It wasn't it mm. wasn't really given yep. much of a reason to exist in the film beyond being black and the roommate. Yeah. Um, and and, and uh, Alexander Ship's brother, but like that's not that like relationships not even really explored. It is I think not the explored supporting at all. cast is is solid, but I do wish that it had either been a lot more people, so it would have felt like more of a full like ensemble, like yeah, crowded kind of like thing, a Mama Mia or, esque amount. Yeah, of yeah, or less people, so that the characters that we did have would be able to feel a little bit more fleshed out. But they keep introducing like they, they halfway through the movie they introduce the guy that was sydney sweeney's ex from like her like she knew since she was a child yeah. like, there's a whole weird thing going on there it's like why is this guy here like he honestly does not add much he's not he's, i mean totally fine his performance but like he is, they, they keep it, adding is, these characters it, that take away from the ones that are there that yeah. i wish had more development or, or like mm -hmm. personality and it seems like they were trying to use uh, those i think that guy and then Margaret uh, Glenn yes. Powell's other those are those are kind of I guess and then her sides boyfriend of the Bo, same who is yeah. very funny he's, he's really very funny. funny there's the scene the scene where he just like starts showering and strips off his pants he's like yeah. you know b buck naked you get a little one eyed snake shot there that I was not yeah. expecting that um, and you know he's given some good Australianisms that are pretty f just funny mm -hmm. lines but those characters do kind of come in the way of our like just being with who we want to watch the movie for mm -hmm. and yeah. it is they're just kind of like thrown in there and then they're just kind of like also thrown out i mean there's yeah. like a little you know the the film ties everything up in a neat bow there are no loose ends really i guess except for bow but he all he really mm -hmm. cares about is surfing so whatever yeah yeah and playing cello i believe <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. so it's just the the side character is definitely left something to be desired but it wasn't like What's the runtime? It wasn't even that long, was it? Uh, over... yeah. This is this is an hour and uh, forty three. Yeah. So you yeah. don't have a lot of time to do much with no. side characters in that if you're trying to actually have our main characters nice and and developed as they were. Yeah. Even though we are pretty much continually learning about the two main characters as the film mm -hmm. goes along, we get basically drip fed information unlike other rom-coms which would probably like front load like this is who this person is this sure. is who this person is and this is why they can't yeah. be together this is why they are incompatible but this film definitely a takes a different like angle to our character exposition well yeah absolutely because it does start off uh, their their meet cute happens before we know either of them uh mm -hmm. so we were never given the this is what their life was before they met each other and this is why it is different after that you get uh, you get ideas of that as sydney sweeney is talking on the phone to her friend or uh, as as ben is talking to his roommate um it, sort of after the fact but i do like that it's kind of like an in medias race uh no that's not the right word uh, it's it just starts without exposition uh, she shows up at the coffee shop and then that's, I mean, that's essentially the first scene of the film. And so mm -hmm. I, I actually do like that it's just kind of, you're thrust into it. But I think, again, it's playing with the fact that we understand the tropes. We under we have the expectation of what, how this uh, relationship is going to develop, what these people's roles are, and then learning about them as, especially I think for Ben, uh, um, revealing different elements of his personality and his past and the, why, why, the reasons why he acts the way he does are revealed across the course of the film. The... They become a lot more nuanced and interesting of characters as it progresses, as opposed to okay, these are two interesting developed characters. At first, they're very, they're very they feel very stereotypical, and they're just mm -hmm. filling the roles. But it becomes less so over the course of the film, which is nice. Especially, yeah. I think my favorite character detail: the fact that uh, 
that Ben is that like not very good at swimming, even though he's very physically fit because he doesn't do cardio. I think that's a great character detail I've never seen explored in a film. And also yeah. that he's like afraid of heights, and like he, he has the and he has the, the song that he like tries to calm himself down with. He's afraid of flying. It's like these are character flaws and ideas that I think really enrich his character. And and Glenn Powell does amazing with all those like mm-hmm. awkward moments where he's like hiding his fear, but he he just absolutely cannot. Yeah, yeah, and I think that those the, the film feels fairly modern like it's the 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 way characters act and the and the things that they talk about like that swimming example where sydney sweeney makes fun of him for like you know not doing cardio that is not a joke that's gonna land 20 years ago that's a joke that doesn't make any sense and maybe it won't make sense 20 years from now when like the the fitness trends are different but it felt like a you know aligning pretty much with like current trends of how people talk there's like a couple of cringes thrown in there but then it's a little mm-hmm. self-aware about that and so it's mm-hmm. like you know it wasn't cloying in its attempting to be modern and with it sure yeah. yeah it was like i was like oh okay i mean this, you know knows what's knows what's up knows how people kind of are nowadays as opposed well, no, to absolutely I, and I think the primary example of that is that the th- the crux of our film is actually based around a lesbian marriage and mm-hmm. that is that is never like it's not a thing that they're like, oh, wow, well, like, doing gay jokes or anything. It's just like, no, these are the characters that are in the background. They know them. This is a marriage. We've seen we've seen my best friend's wedding. We've seen wedding crashers. We know that these uh, – the, the wedding singer. We know that these, this plot of people meet at a wedding is is great for romance and for sneaking off and having crazy things happen. And But having it just be – I mean, I don't think I've ever seen – I don't know if I've ever seen a lesbian wedding happen on film ever. Uh, so just having it be like a background default element of the film is like, it does feel very modern where it's not like, it, it's not a thing that's drawn attention to. It's like, yeah, these are characters and they fight. I actually do love that their dynamic, Alexander Ship and her, uh, her girlfriend who becomes her wife, uh, mm-hmm. especially at the end as they reveal that they were also kind of acting through these things and they take a bow yeah. and it's like, they're very, very charming. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. To me, that's like playing with the Shakespeare there's a number of moments in which there, sure. there, you have these two characters off to the side, like literally in an aside moment. Yep. yep. They're talking to the each best, other. Those are some of the best comedy in the movie. Yeah, they're funny. And like with the purpose of another character hearing, that is, that's like, that's out of the play. That's out mm-hmm. of how Shakespeare would stage action like that. You wouldn't. You wouldn't really come up with that idea to do it like that in um, oh, if sure. you're just coming up with the idea of writing like, the plot. Yeah, 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 writing it today. So mm-hmm. you know, while it wasn't like screaming Shakespeare at me, I was like, mm-hmm. I felt I felt the influence, which was nice. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to say about anyone but you before we get our scores, Timo? Hmm. hmm. I don't know. Yeah, needle drops only okay. There was the one song that has like the chorus, like one, two, three. That was the only song that I one, two, three, four. Everybody get on the dance floor. Mm-hmm. That's all. I was like, oh, that's a song from twenty twenty three. That's big, big on the radio nowadays. And the rest of them was like, oh, okay, whatever. Kind of music was kind of definitely uh, like cueing my emotions. The music sure. was like yeah. every time you're supposed to feel in certain so, a certain sort of way, the music would play the exact way like the exact tone and the exact emotional note that the film wanted you to feel which Mm -hmm. i was like i already was feeling that so do i really need that in the movie i don't know you know they 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 can't help themselves i guess music directors nowadays in films but Mm -hmm. i don't know you can do better you can be more creative than that so yeah Closing thoughts uh, are that this is a good movie. The, the leads have great chemistry. They are up and coming movie stars, and it and the main thing for me is I want to support studios putting out different kinds of fucking movies, and this is one of them. And it is a good one of those. This is not going to enter the echelon of oh, you gotta watch this rom com, but it 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 serves its purpose as a comfortably solid entry into ro- modern romance comedies, which again have been almost entirely relegated to to streaming services. I mean, Netflix pumps out fucking 20 of those a year, and Hallmark is making 20 of those a month, only in December. Uh, mm-hmm. But but that genre is something that is important for diversifying the film industry. And I, I it seems like this movie's doing okay. It, it only costs yeah. $25 million to make, so it'll probably be at least somewhat uh, uh, profitable. Um, but It just came out overseas, too. Sure, they yeah. you know, got a delayed release uh, internationally. It just came out... So just came out a week ago here yeah (laughs) it's a very new movie uh timo your Mm -hmm. score for anybody anyone but you 
my score. I'm I'm gonna do it. Six point nine. Six point nine. Ooh, that's that's actually pretty high. I mean, that is that that Timo, that's edging on a seven. I know, it's but it's crazy. not. It's not. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go lower than that. I think it's like a six point one or two, six point two mm-hmm. out of ten. I, I think it is. I think it's a it's a good movie. There, there's yeah. not anything wrong. You with said this you, film. you had a phrase comfortably serviceable. It was it yeah. was a, it was a pretty comfortable film. I mean, you just kind of like, I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Like I, I, but I don't care because I just want to. I want it's the devil is in the details of the film and how the yeah. characters weave their way through the dramatic situation. And I know that they're going to get together at the end. And I know yeah. that they're going to have a moment in which they hate each other right before they get together at the end. Like that's just how these things work. <laughs> it's paint by numbers, like I said. But you know, you could still make a beautiful painting that way. Yeah. Oh, totally. No, I, I think that the final note that I want to end on is that this movie's. Uh, situation that it's been released into is the perfect scenario for this movie to release in. If this had come out in a uh, era when we were getting romance comedies from big stars from studios, we at least they actually like every month. This would feel rote. It would feel by the numbers. It would not stand out at all. These would be the less popular stars that are making this sort of B or C tier rom com, as opposed to like seeing Sandra Bullock or Ryan Gosling or whoever, like Matthew McConaughey, but, other other YouTube now. Alum. Exactly. Yeah. Shout out. Uh, but now we don't. We 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 don't have Sandra Bullock and Matthew McConaughey making their fucking rom coms anymore. This is, frankly, it's the premier rom com of the year of our Lord twenty twenty three, which is crazy. Uh, and, but that does make it stand out and feel like we're we're giving it the benefit of the doubt and saying, oh yeah, no, it's still good because it's kind of the only one doing the thing that it's doing. Mm-hmm. But I mean, not a lot to hate. I think. In yeah. This no, one. absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you enjoyed this, if you didn't like it, talk to us in the comments, talk to us in our Discord, subscribe, like the video, all that nonsense. We've got Timo award season. Oh, it's coming up. This is not <laughs> in that conversation, but we are going to be very busy with that at the start of the new year. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. We'll see you then. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another back lot. I said another. 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 Another back lot. Another. <laughs> <laughs>